back at it. Your boy Reese right here, broadcasting live from Media Campus West. The Reeks Talk Cast is all the way up. Now, check this out. You know, we live too with the game. Shout out my brother, Potty Ali, broadcasting in Miami uh, and a whole bunch of other places too. Another state. Shout out to Indiana, Michigan, and all through the Midwest. All right, here we go, man. We got another legend in the building. Y'all already see the chain. Y'all know the face. Y'all know the voice. But we got to do something for this man that we do up here when it comes down to talking to icons. We got something called the biggest intro ever. You ready for that, homie? Let's see. It. Let's get it going. All right, man. This Texas icon has withstood the test of time by consistently providing full length projects for over a 20 year period. You can go to any major streaming platform and not only find the greatest hits playlist, but you can also find music that is spawned from his eloquent style of blending soulful melodies and Southwestern rap lyrics. Everybody knows from Texas and beyond that a zero feature is one of the must haves uh, on any album or any kind of project. He's done songs alongside the UGK, Slim Thug, Scarface, Kirko, and yes, Beyonce. And even has slaps with Ashley Larry, a.k.a. my boy Donnell mm-hmm. Rollins, another friend of the show. He shut down performances in, a, in packed arenas and even give personal DMs from the Houston Astros. He was Drake before Drake, and when it comes to the hook, man, you could put him up there with Nate Dogg in any industry certified street crooner. The man makes every beat sound impeccable. The only person to make a million hits off of Digi 003 to this day gives back to his city. He's a father, labor owner, a bodybuilder, and even though he only lasts like once a week, he might be one of the funniest people we know on social media. Zero is live with Reese. What's happening? Man, I ain't going to lie. That's... That was that was pretty live right there. That was you, pretty live. You do a lot of radio, so so I'm just gonna accept that and take it, my brother. Man, I I appreciate that. That's I've never heard that before. Like you definitely had to breathe. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that, a little, yeah. A little that's bit. man. I appreciate that. This is this that's is dope. one of them interviews. Like I told uh, Jada, because I was like, it's tough to do these type of interviews because as as a person that's in the culture and a fan of hip hop. You don't know where to start because you got so much history, but it's right. continue. You continue to move that finish line. Right, so look, right. I'm gonna try to start from the beginning. Man, let's so, do it. So, so what was that first song that you heard from, like an artist, a rap artist, that you was like, I like this? Man, the first song that I heard would have to be Paul Revere. Mm. Yeah, it was the first one I was allowed to listen to because <laughs> See, you know yeah. my auntie then was like, I don't want you to listen to this other stuff, but you yeah. know. Check this out. Like, I think it was maybe a, it was Christmas, maybe. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, check this out. I was like, some white guys? Yeah. Like, I ain't know, like, I ain't know who they was. I was a little boy. Right. And I heard them. I was like, okay, this sound cool. Yeah. Like, they sound like girls to me, but I mean, you know, <laughs> hey, it, it was kind of cool. Yeah. So, I mean, that that was the first rap mm-hmm. that I was able to listen to in, in, my, in my aunt's house. Yeah. And, uh, and I would have to say, to make me want to be able to do that, uh-huh. I think it was when I heard. Uh, well, to be honest, it wasn't a rap song. Okay, let's, let's talk me about rap. that. It was, it was, it was SWV. I get so weak. Mm, okay, yeah. okay, and, and it was, it was instrumental, mm. and I started flowing to it. That's and it. the people around me was like, "Hey, man, keep doing that." Mm-hmm. So I mean, I kept doing it. Was you already? Did you already know you could sing and hit notes too at that point? Man, I had already been in the choir, mm. and I mean, I was, I was, I didn't want nobody to know I was in the choir because, <laughs> right. of course, yeah. didn't nobody know where I went to school at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was another side of town, right. so I was in the, you know, in in the in the melody years of Shady Acres Church of Christ mm. as a background member, I guess you could yeah. call it, and uh, I didn't know I could harmonize or nothing like that but I mean you know I think everybody at one time in their life gonna get in the mirror yeah. and be like you know you know me 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 that type of you know what I'm saying so I was doing that a lot and uh I think that's how it started okay yeah it okay. came from the church yeah I can tell that a little bit by how you know when you dig into your melodies and then right, you right. always know how to make those blends and everybody can't do that, man. Like you'll be you'll be rapping and then go right into a, a melody or you'll, right. you'll, you'll you'll harmonize under yourself and right, rapping right. what you'll be singing. Right, I'll be right. like, bro, he don't miss. I mean, I'm trying not to miss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I I had to learn that from somebody though. I had to I mean, I I did it a little bit. But I got to a certain point in my career, 
and somebody started teaching me how to, you know, this cat named Mikael Zibi, like okay. one of the greatest, I can't even call him, because he do everything, so I can't say he's a producer. I'm going to just say he will everything. Mm -hmm. He a total package like myself. Yeah. And he started vocal coaching me as I was recording. You know, it, it took a turn around the song These Days. Mm -hmm. You know, he started showing me some different things, and I started applying them to my, you know, to my own craft. And I think that's how I got to where I am right now. That makes plenty of sense, man. On yeah. the radio side, if you tapped in, we got Zero, the iconic Zero in the building. And, uh, yeah. One Deep, we definitely going to talk about that. Yeah. But but we trying to get a little bit of the history and how you kind of got into it and, and whatnot. For sure. Um, starting off, you were one of the only people doing it like that. Like I said, I mentioned Nate Dogg earlier, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, because he was one of the greatest to ever do it, tap into both sides of it. But you were really, really rapping and singing. Right. Uh, did, would you hesitate about doing that blending the two early on? I mean, I used to get, I used to get flack, mm. you know, from some of the cats around me, yeah. because of what we were doing. You know what I'm saying? Like we on the corner, right, right, right. And it's one, tough to be a corn, on the corner and sing and, and being able to sing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. then they're gonna be like, that ain't what we out here for. <laughs> so I mean, uh, but I mean, I wanted to do something, and I'm kind of like I, I pay attention to detail mm -hmm. a whole lot. So I noticed I listen to some songs back then, and you know, people are. They'll rap, mm -hmm. and then they'll rap the same way through the whole song. Yeah, yeah. And, like, by around, about three or four lines in, I'm bored already. I understand So that. I was like, man, how do I, you know, how do I combat that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to do four lines this way. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to do four lines this way. Yeah. Then I'm going to do. So that's where the melody came in. At. Yeah. And once I started to do that on a consistent basis, it was like I couldn't turn it off. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I might just say something and then, some somebody else will say, and it'll be it'll be boring. Mm -hmm. And I said I might say it in B. Mm -hmm. I might rap it in B. Yeah. But then I might come back and I might start singing in another note. Mm -hmm. What I wrote as a rap. Right. So I mean, it just started to grow on me. And uh, but yeah, it, I mean, it's not. It, it's kind of weird for me not to do that now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I feel like I'm just they bored now. Yeah. I don't want them to be bored. I don't. I don't want them to cut off mine and cut on the next rapper stuff. Right. So. Right. Let me, let me do something to make them, you know, pay attention still, you know. I think you got the cheat code because yeah, I do, I you do, do too. You got the cheat code because yeah. real talk, it's like you get seven seconds now, people's attention span, yeah. right? Yeah. So you might hit them with a couple bars and then you switch it. So that's a new set. That's the reset. Yeah, that's, that's the that's reset. The scroll through. That's the reset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero with the cheat code. We're going to yeah. have to go on that one. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. All right. And so as you get to moving through, like you said, you, you was outside early. You right. know what I mean? You you with the fellas, you you doing your thing, uh, but you got this musical talent, mm -hmm. and then you start to meet people around that also have talent. And Texas is his own monster. Like when we talked to Lil Kiki, he was kind of talking about that. It's like right. you got this person here, this person here, this person here, and I don't even have to leave Texas or Oklahoma to be platinum. Right. You definitely are owed to that, but you know him worldwide. Right. Right. So the question is like when you start getting your first roots into Texas and people know you as, you know, I'm this I'm this artist, mm -hmm. um, what were they grabbing you to be in these groups? Or was it like I'm just cool with him, he could rap too and let's just start doing this thing? Well I mean, uh I guess I could say I'm a late bloomer when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Cause uh I think far as the screwed up click goes, yeah. I believe it was me and Lil Flip. We were the last people to be, you know, inducted into the screwed up click before, you know, uh, before screws, you know, untimely passing. Uh -huh. But uh, didn't nobody really, you know, reach out to me. I, I guess I was kind of difficult to deal with. Uh, well, you was in ABN and we know where that turn came from. Yeah, yeah, it came, <laughs> yeah, it came from me. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I was difficult. But I mean, I mean, the talent spoke for itself, right. and I mean, I believe that's the reason why it was difficult. Mm -hmm. Because in in order to hone that type of energy, you holding something in, yeah. And I didn't want to just put it out like everybody else was putting it out. Yeah. So I kind of was a little, you know, I was, you know, life imitating art for real. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I was rapping about, I was gonna, you know, slap your eyebrows off your face, yeah. then they would really come off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I ain't people didn't really wanna, you know, encounter me. Mm -hmm. But I mean I had a couple people, you know, uh I went to people, I'm not gonna say they sought me out or nothing like that. Yeah. Like I went to rec shop, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, because, you know, 
couple of cats I know is at Rec Shop Records. Yeah. And then upon doing a song over there, I got asked to write, you know, hey, help us write Big Mo's album, you know, yeah. City Syrup. So, you know, me and D Gotti wrote that record, yeah. you know, well, those records. And then, but like Al D from the Screwed Up Click, he sought me out yeah. to bring me to his brother, DJ Screw. Mm. And, you know, that's how that happened. But other than that, I mean, it's a bunch of cliques that I'm affiliated with. Like uh, the first one out of my neighborhood would have to be the Killer Clan. Yeah. You know, that was like cats like Street Military. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, the faculty and, you know, uh, BAM. And so that was, you know, that was one clique. And then you got South Park Coalition, which is K Reno. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, the point blank, the reckless clan, like, like all of the the people you would expect to go to and, and, and get beat up really bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like if you came in a, the wrong way. Right. So, I mean, and I, I can really say like, like Richard Pryor said, like you get caught by the bloods, you know, you a blood. You yeah. get caught by the crips, you a crip. Right. And the police pull up, you pull your badge out. Like I was, you know, well not the police, but you know right. what I'm saying? I, know what you mean. I was with everybody yeah. though. SBC, Killer Clan, you know, screwed up click and, 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 and still am to this day. Right. So, I mean, you know, that's how that happened. Yeah, that that talent was kind of like a yeah, a loop. Yeah, like a calling card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. And, and, and that talent spoke for itself. It's like everybody wanted a, a part of that zero sound on their on their tracks and records, as they should, because it right. speaks for itself. You have dropped over twenty albums over this span, and right. still going. Right, man. When you look at that body of work, and you did it all on the Digio Three, I wasn't playing when I I saw that. I was like, "That's amazing, bro! How did they yeah. last that long?" Oh <laughs> uh, man, and to be honest with you, I just I just switched over to an iMac that don't need that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, you know, to a Scarlet. Right. But uh, yeah, that that I mean, it, it worked for what I needed to do. Absolutely. Because I mean, I didn't really want to go too far. Until, you know, the guy who was teaching me how to do it, everything I know how to do mm -hmm. to teach me that that mixing and mastering part, too. Because yeah. I kind of feel like if I get to this part, it's kind of going to take away from the time to create. Because yeah. after I create, I'm definitely one going to spend that much time or maybe even more, mm -hmm. you know, adjusting levels and trying to make it sound like what it needs to be. Right. So I'm just like, man, let me just concentrate Art. on the monster that I am. Mm -hmm. You know, let me let me try to be, you know, Freddy Krueger to the best of my ability here. Mm -hmm. I let the special effects dudes, you know, worry about how the they claw do, look yeah. when I, you know, when I do my thing. Right. So, uh, but I mean, that's all I needed. I mean, the guy, you know, set it up. You know, first it was Mike Dean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He showed me some stuff. Well, actually, before that, I got to say it was it was Icy Hot mm. from Street Military. Like, okay. actually showed me how to get down on the, on the EPS. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one of them old joints that you have to load sounds into. Yeah. And, I mean, man, it just, uh, I don't know. It's just that Digio 3, it, it did what I needed to do. One headphone jack. I mean, I'm one deep entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't want nobody else in there, so I only needed one headphone. Right. You know what I'm saying? One microphone, one chair, and the Digio 3 was perfect. Right. And, I mean, I go in my studio right now, it's still hooked up. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Hey man, you didn't just do what it needed to do for you. It did what it needed to do for the culture and for us too as the listeners because we got consistent works from you, man. You right, know right. He's the only one to, to, to sell heroin and codeine huh. on records. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, Indeed. And make, it, and make it dope for all of us to be able to listen to and be a part of your, your lifestyle, man. I made everybody an addict. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> and they that still, was the, they that was the goal. <laughs> yeah, that was the goal. That's what's up, man. So let's kind of fast forward now because you got one deep. Um, you got a couple projects off of that, and then you got artists. How hard is it for you to identify with and find artists with you having so much talent? I know that's got to be like you kind of get nitpicky at times. Yeah, I mean, I mean, especially for me because I only want to deal with artists that are like, like myself. That makes sense. Like I don't want to do nothing because the woman's body look good mm -hmm. or because this dude can talk about killing a whole lot. Yeah. I want to, you know, I don't want to say I want them to emulate me, but maybe I do. Mm -hmm. Like anything coming out of One Deep Entertainment, I want it to be something with substance. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you stray a little bit, because, I mean, I'm going to stray a little bit and be, you know, off the beaten path a little bit. But, I mean, I won't, I won't, I don't want rappers. I don't want artists. I, I kind of like to say I want realists. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I want people that's going to actually have a soul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't come over here because you know you can make some money because you can come out here and be repetitive and just, you know, mm. Cookie cutter. Yeah, I don't want that. Because, I mean, it's easy. It's easy, you know, to to cut a check off a cookie cutter. Right. It's hard to do what I do. It is. It's hard to do what I do. And it took me a long time to get where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And with me spearheading, if I got anybody that's like me, I can sit there and be like, well, no, I don't do this because this is what I did. And yeah. It, yeah. it, it wasted eight years. Gotcha. You so it's kind of like talk from a firsthand perspective. Yeah. It's like, all right, I've been in these labels. I've been in these major situations. Right. Right. And, right. And that, does that kind of help you how you shape and mold your label? How you move? It does, because mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I want everybody to. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, you take Death Row, right? Yeah. You look up, they rapping, mm -hmm. and then you look up Snoop and Dre break off. They doing movies, mm -hmm. you know. They they acting. Now they, you know, then Dre moves and, and does scores to movies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I want people that's going to be so well-rounded yeah. that the music is just the introduction to the rest of your opportunities. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and for me, I don't want to put you in a position because, you know, I don't know, because your because your booty big and you yeah. a woman, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't deserve it just because you look good. I mean, I want you to, I want you to actually earn this here. Yeah. And for the men, the same way, like I want you to earn this here. I want you to actually get, give your craft the chance to do something other than your look. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I kind of want like like minded individuals to come up under me, so I can kind of make them to what I am. Because I don't, I don't want nobody on my label. All I want to do is spearhead you into your own thing. I like that. And yeah. that, that that's like the epitome of being one deep. You actually showing people, as they say, how to fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, I might not even like you too much, so I want to hurry up and get you in there, give you the game, and get you out. You know right. what I'm saying? So you can do your own thing and, and quit worrying me. You know right. what I'm saying? I got you. Yeah. But, uh, but that's called integrity, man. You 100 with the artists, and uh, sometimes that's where it gets lost with these labels. And I know you probably experienced that too. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Got you. So let's talk about this new project, man. You dropped it everywhere, man. You, you, the last one you dropped, I think it was the last one you dropped. You got like a million streams in a couple hours. Yeah. So talk about this new project that's dropping and then some of these artists that you got uh, coming off your label. Well, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, that last one did do a million real quick. <laughs> uh, I mean, we was, I mean, you know, it was it was COVID lockdown. Didn't nobody have nothing to do. Uh -huh. And if you're a businessman, you got to understand, man, that everybody lives with their phone in their hand right now. Yeah. So if they got something to upload, download, side load, however you're going to load it, I mean, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You just got to dress it up. And, I'm, and I mean, I believe that was Rohamed Ali. But uh, this one here, Pressure, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, it's been two years mm -hmm. since I released uh, that Rohamed, or actually 22 months. And I just felt like uh, it's been a little while. I've never put that many months in between releases before. Yeah. So I had to kind of challenge myself to like, you know what? In two years, definitely my listeners are straying and listening yeah. to other versions of myself. Yeah. Maybe, you know. We, we mentioned those earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We mentioned those. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and, and, it's, yeah. a, and it's, a whole, it's a whole lot of them right now. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I'm like, okay, cool. Let me put a project together. Let me name it Pressure. Mm -hmm. And then let me try to match the energy to this title on every song. Mm, I like so I, I tried to challenge myself to, you know, to come Pressure 20 times back to back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I did with this one. And I and I put 20 because it's been so long. Yeah. Uh, you know, you do the regular 13 or, mm -hmm. or EP. I'm like, nah, let me go and do 20 and, and you know, shoot a whole bunch of videos and Try to, you know, get my, you know, uh, as I they said on the ball of blocking movie, mm -hmm. hey, man, this last one was messed up. Go and give me one so I can get my people back. Yeah. So I'm like, let me, let me get my people back with this one here. So I think I did some dope artwork that kind of was, 
straight to the point, yeah. you know, with the writing the lyrics with, the, you know, the pen and the page on fire, let you know that I I haven't lost my step lyrically, you know what I'm saying? Knees probably don't work the same, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but everything else is the same game. Right. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's the story with pressure, man. Just had to give my people something to let them know that I'm still here, you know what I'm saying? And, right. and I'm still kicking. That's what I'm talking about. After 29 birthdays, no nobody needs work the same. But it's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. 29 <laughs> was a long time ago, too. Yeah. But that's just an ode to you and your artistry, man, and what you've been doing and putting in his work for years, but still applying pressure and still being able to come up with these crazy albums, man, these full-length features. Like you just said, you just dropped a double-length feature in 2022. Right. That's unheard of, man. And I know every song is going to have its own identity. I mean, it was easy, though. Yeah, yeah. It's easy, man, because, I mean, you, I mean, come on, it's cheating. Like, not only the cheat code we discussed, but, I mean, I got my own studio, so I ain't got to, yeah. I just wake up and go upstairs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If if the knees is agreeing, you know what I'm saying, to go upstairs right now. Right. But, I mean, I just get up and go up there, and when it was time to uh, bring it to life, I didn't have to record no songs. I just had to go through, you know, my discography and, you know, listen to what I thought married the title Pressure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was kind of cool. Yeah. I think from the intro, I knew it was going to be a dope album after the intro. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty hot. That's what's up. So who do we have before we get – we got a game. We play Fast Five with our legends, so we definitely got to play that game. Okay. But who do you have uh, a, a one deep, you know, that's coming out that we need to be looking out for? Well, right now I only have one artist, a female artist by the name of Lolita Monroe. She's present with us here today. Okay. Uh, her debut album is entitled Napoleon Complex because, mm. I mean, if you can look over there, you know <laughs> – yeah, you heard Napoleon was a little dude right. with a big old attitude, and I think that describes her wholeheartedly and non-equivocally. Mm -hmm. This is her <laughs> and her music. Like I was saying at first, I'm not going to really deal with you if you cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, she has a big voice. Yeah. Her following is growing amazingly and, and uh, real quick mm -hmm. because when she opened her mouth, just like me, the first thing you're going to say is, I know you lying. You know what I'm saying, and and that's what you need to say right now because she's not a she's not afraid to say what she wants to say, kind of like me because I would never tell any artist under me or next to me, hey man, uh, you sure you want to say that? Because mm. you kind of know if you if you go in the club and trip with the club, you know the club gonna beat you up right. unless your hands that good. Right. So if you feel like your hands that good, I'm gonna tell you where the club at. I'm gonna walk in there with you too. Mm. And, I mean, you just better fight hard as me because after they beat us up, I'm definitely coming after you for, for, for getting me in this thing. But, I mean, she, you know, she holds on. This is the only artist I have on uh, on One Deep Entertainment right now. I have a couple of other people that I'm, uh, I don't want to say I'm helping them hone their skills. And then, but, I mean, I have other people that I'm, uh, that I have my eye on. Yeah. That are just about ready to get to where she's at right now. But as far as right now, it's, it's it's her on One Deep Entertainment and, and myself. So that's it. It's two yeah. people on One Deep Entertainment. I like that, though, because you're able to give that artist that that that, that courtesy that they need. You know, right. you give them all the focus that they need to get out there. You know how it is being on a label with a bunch of folks. And right, you right. can't get, you know, the attention you need. Right. Now, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of One Deep chains I've given out. <laughs> But as far as the the you know the actual work ethic goes, it's it's her right now. That's what's up. That's what's up. shout out to her. Let me hit that hype bell. I had about fourteen different hype bell moments. I didn't hit it because we in deep conversation over uh -huh. here. Man, zero get to talk. It's like talking to James Earl Jones or somebody. Uh -huh. you know what I mean, you got to listen. Uh -huh. So uh, let's go ahead and get into these fast five questions, man. Um, the first question, you answer them however you want to. It could be one word, it could be a whole sentence, man. What is your favorite thing or the first thing that comes to mind when you say the word Texas? Hmm. Swangers. Mm. Swangers. Yeah. Yeah, elbows and vogues. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a it's a staple yeah. for us, you know. Kind of like you would think, you know, uh uh double backed up women. Uh I'm gonna say <laughs> that's number two, but number one is swangers. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I love the culture out there, man. It's it's one of a kind. It you is. I, mean? I love it, it is. man. All right, what's the craziest thing you blew a bag on? 
I, the craziest thing I've blown a bag on is just being dumb in the club. Mm. Just, you know, throwing money in the strip club. Right. Like, I think one night I may have done like $30,000 in the air. Mm. I threw so much money, like, Slim Thug had to come over there and be like, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> but it's good to have it's good to have your partners come over and be yeah. like, "All right, bro, this that's enough." <laughs> and I had to I had to kind of let them know what I was doing. Yeah, like I definitely have an ulterior motive, right? But I mean, like every time they run the zero set, mm -hmm. I'm finna act a fool, right? And these couple of women right here that I know personally, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw money on them, yeah, and then. I'm finna get this back after the club. I'm finna try to unless they slide out on me. But I mean, yeah, I just just throwing money at uh at V Live. I think I, I, I think it's like twenty eight thousand dollars. Yeah, pay some tuition that night. Too. Yeah, I did. I did. Well, right. If you can go back to in, in a time machine and talk to Zero at eighteen, give him one sentence. What do you tell him? Don't sign nothing. Mm. Catch arthritis early. Don't let your knuckles. Pop for no penmanship. Mm. Don't sign nothing. Gotcha. Yeah. Plenty of sense. We're going to have to have another interview. Huh? All real right, talk. You could tour with five people, any five people, here or not here, and you also shooting a show while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Who was those five people? Uh, Zero. Of course. The most city done. <laughs> the king of the ghetto. Uh, Rivers Presley. And the last one I would have to say, uh, my favorite rapper of all time, K Reno. Okay. So four of me and one of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. yeah. And and people gave him these nicknames too, man. I love it. Yeah. All yeah. right, man. I know I know you a a, a a stogie enthusiast, man. So what's your favorite cigar right now? Right now I would have to say, uh, to actually to be to be fair, I would have to say James Tony cigar. That's my that's my favorite cigar right now. It used to be, it used to be a rat tail. I, I used to like smoking rats. You know what I'm saying? A little short gangster ones, but yeah. you know, you know James was in Houston for Cigar Week, yeah. and he brought his his line with him. Yeah. And I was like, man, like I like this cigar. Like it 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 paired it paired very well with my with my uh, favorite my favorite uh, bourbon too. So okay. Like his his cigar goes well with Maker's Mark, so I uh I I enjoy his cigar real you know like a lot. That's for sure. I can't finish the whole thing. <laughs> I wouldn't advise anybody to finish any cigar, yeah. but I mean uh it was it was a great pair. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Once again, we appreciate you pulling up on us, bro. You you been in the culture and doing what is supposed to be done to the culture, which is bringing it up for a long time, man. We appreciate what you do for the community as well. For all the uh, folks in your city and, and, you know, and just giving back. So, man, thank you for man. coming through and spending some time with us. Make sure y'all cop that pressure. Stream oh, it. Listen to it. Download it. Do whatever you're going to do to it. Check yeah. out this One Deep Entertainment. Look out for Napoleon Complex. That's on the way, too. And before right. we get up out of here, we got another show coming up. My brother Hollywood, uh, the classic coming up. We got two ladies from FDL Train coming through. We're going to have our question today. Talk about some hot topics, too. Before we get up out of here for this show, though, we're going to give you a Pops Knows Best. A line that says, don't spend your last to impress folks you won't know in five years. So uh, be conscious on that, where you're putting your time and your money and in, in, in your efforts into, because it may not get that return on investment. All right, y'all, we getting up out of here. In about five minutes, we coming right back on the stream and the radio side. Shout out to the homie Zero in the building. This is Reach Radio.